Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your hosts, Jeremiah. And Rufina Antonetti. <laughs> uh, you know why we're here, right? To talk straight about the Bible. Derecho de la palabra <laughs> de Dios. Straight. What else is there? There's nothing more. My wife and I just talking this morning about God and his power, and he's given us blessings. But the most important thing is that we follow his will. Yes. Right? Yep. We That's follow his will. That's are the you, most important thing. Yeah. Are you following God's will? Mm -hmm. See, if you're not following God's will, then what else is there? The Bible says that any, any person, any man or woman that does the will of God will be blessed. If you're not following God's will, then what will you be following? <laughs> what will? <laughs> That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Say that again one more time. If you're not following God's will, then what, what will you be following? Uh, remember that there are only two things in this world, light and darkness, the kingdom of God, the sphere of darkness, the sphere of darkness. I won't even give him a kingdom. The mm. sphere of darkness. Yeah, yeah. He is not a king. He's called the prince of palatine, the prince, prince of the of, air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he ain't no king. There's That's only right. one king. And he tried to promise, he, he, tried, he tried very hard to convince Jesus, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. Jesus, so you, you, don't don't have, have you don't have no kingdoms. <laughs> you don't even own You have that. no kingdoms. They're my kingdoms, and they're going to be always my kingdom. He yes. says, hey, back off. Back off. That's what we need to tell that stinking, filthy serpent, that defiled piece of flesh mm -hmm. that we walk in sometimes. Get out of the way. Mm -hmm. Get off. Mm -hmm. ah. Hallelujah. I like what, I believe, who was it? The OJs that said, people all over the world, join in on the love train. Mm -hmm. you, know that, you know that's a gospel song, right? I hope you do. That's right. They came out of church. They wrote that church song. And the, and the world took it. They don't even know what they're singing. But uh -huh. the love train is all about God. There's a lot of Christian songs out there that people don't even know that they were singing about the Lord. Anyway, mm -hmm. let's go on. And we're looking at Proverbs chapter 5, verse 7 and 8 today. I mean, we, we, you know why we're swimming here? Because... This is all about the because way we, we live. Because we can't get out of the water. We can't get out the water. <laughs> <laughs> now then, my sons, listen to me and do not depart from or do not forget the words of my mouth. Let your way in life, Amplify Version, be far from her. Mm. Be far from her. And do not go near the door of her house Avoid even being near the places of temptation. Wow. When I when I read that this morning about the door, the first thing that came to my mind was Genesis chapter four, where God speaks to Cain just before he killed his brother, mm. Abel. If you do well, he said, shall you not be accepted? And he says, and if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and unto you shall be his desire mm -hmm. and you shall but you shall rule or and you shall rule over him notice who is him that is lying at your door mm. this word in the hebrew represents an animal mm. crouching at the doorstep mm. of your house and god said don't open the door no abre la puerta. Do mm. not open the door because if you do, you're going to let him in. Instead of listening to God, Cain opened the door and that animal jumped on him mm. and inspired him to kill his brother. Jesus. Well, what the Bible says to stay away from her door. Mm -hmm. Why? Because she's crouching there. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit of prostitution. It is the spirit of whoredom. Well, tell me, mm. what is crouching at your door? Do you know? 
because we all have a sin, we all have perversion, and that perversion is what's lying at the door of our lives. And it, it please open. I have something nice I want to show you. Uh, uh, or sometimes you may get into a business uh, proposition, and all of a sudden, you find yourself wow. in a position that is ready to jump on you. Wow. In this verse of Scripture, Solomon advises his sons hmm. to stay far away from the seducer, the seducedress. <laughs> he warns them not to go near the door of her house. And this follows the earlier verse that says, that talks about the woman as a flatterer, someone that entices to tempt a man into adultery. And of course, the same principle applies to both men and women. Solomon tells them, listen, listen. Escucha. Bend your ear. Hmm. Don't abandon my wise counsel. Wow. Solomon was a wise man, even though he didn't use w wisdom for himself sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Because he's a man, right? Not that he's a man, but I mean like a human. Okay, I'm not just saying like men don't have wisdom. I'm just saying like he, he's a man. He, he's a flesh. He's flesh, flesh and blood. Don't walk. Run away from the door of her house. Don't go near it. And here, you know, I just have to say marriage is not easy. Um, you have to work hard to keep your marriage. And anyone that's married can agree with that. We have differences, we have habits, we have, you know, our own thought patterns. And then sometimes because of that, we may think that we're unhappy and unfulfilled. And we may even think, um, if I weren't married anymore, or if I find someone else while being married, hmm. maybe th that will change these feelings. But it's it's not, it's not. Only God, through his word, can satisfy us. Jeremiah and I have a song called, Only Jesus, Only Jesus satisfies, satisfies your, soul. your soul. Only Jesus. So we need to recognize the enemy because the enemy can come disguised as an angel of light. He can dress himself up as one that is godly and religious and so we need to beware. He will use others to make us fall if we're not alert. Hmm. And as with married couples, beware when you hear in your head, I could do better than this. Okay? There is one out there, and it could be a man, it could be a woman, it could be a system, but we know that it's an enemy that will come to rob, kill, and destroy you don't go near that door. And Jeremiah was just talking about the word door. The fourth Hebrew alphabet, dialect, means door, pathway, to enter. And it, but it also means this. Door, pour, lift up. Hmm. Right, and I found this meaning in, and I found this meaning in one of the Hebrew, um, one of the Jewish websites, and I want to read this because I just, it just pricked my heart this morning. The meaning of dialect is a door. It also means dull, a poor person, and we talked about that this morning, right? Mm -hmm. Finally, the word dialect represents delasoni, which means to lift me up. How does these three definitions work together? Well, the connection occurs when every individual realizes that he or she is poor. Hmm. Not poverty in the sense necessarily that you financial want or financial need, okay? But rather, it means that everything a person owns, in fact, belongs to God. God has been kind, merciful enough to give us life. God has been kind and merciful enough to give us substance. And with God, without God, we have nothing. And the acknowledgement of this is the door into God's chamber. So here we have the prostitute trying to lure you into her chamber. But 
we need to go into God's chamber because once we enter that chamber, God will lift us up. The Lasoni to bless us with life, health, substance, success. In Psalms 30 of the book of um in the book of Psalms 30, King David tells us, I praise God because he lifts me up. The Lasoni. Mm. If we turn this phrase around, we could say, Delosoni, because God lifts me up, I praise him. In this expression, God lifts me up by giving me the skills to be productive. This enables me to praise him from a higher level. Isn't that beautiful? That is uh, magnificent. That awesome? you, know, you know the reason that the door, uh, all, the, all the things that you mentioned, absolutely, but there, are, uh, one of the meanings of the door also is different dimensions. Mm. Okay, um, you know I, I like what uh, what Brother Craig put up this morning. He said, "Feelings, oh, 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 feelings." That's an old song. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Um, see, we can't walk by feelings. We can't walk by the mm-hmm. senses of our flesh. We have to walk by truth. Now. The word door means different dimensions, but what's interesting, when you go through the Aleph Bet, which is the alphabet of the Hebrews, it says Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalet, He. Mm. Dalet, right, the fourth letter, comes after the Gimel. The Gimel represents a person that is very rich, mm-hmm. has a lot of camels, a lot of land, a lot of credit. <laughs> <laughs> Watch this. Who comes out of his door Mm -hmm. very humbly Mm. and bows to the poor man to give a a gift without anyone seeing him. That's right. But then the door comes before the hay, Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalit, hay, which represents the covenant of life. Mm. This represents Christ. The Bible says, who came out of the door of heaven... Mm became flesh, dwelt among us, and made us rich Uh through his riches, but even took on our poverty to make us rich. He bowed his life to us to give us the life, the covenant of life, which is the hay. So that's why when you look at the door of the prostitute Mm. and you look at the doors of this world, it will say, here, I am bowing something to you. I want to give you a gift without anybody looking at it. That's yeah. what the prostitute is. She or, or, the, or the spirit of prostitute is a woman or spirit of prostitution that says, come into my door. Nobody's going to see you. It's private. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'll take care of you. I have cinnamon. I have all these things. And what happens is that we forget that the door of unfaithfulness, that's what it's all about will kill you. Mm. And this morning, as I was thinking about the door and I was thinking about the word, you know, being honey, because I read something on honey, I got inspiration of a thought. So I want to read it to you because I wrote it down. Even the knowledge of false doctrine Mm. can be as honey dips from the honeycomb. It tastes sweet, inspires delight, and arouses the flavors of the tongue. But in reality, it is a dangerous poison that seeps out of the teeth or from the teeth of the serpent. Wow. That's what happens when the serpent bites you. It seeps its poison into you and it slowly kills you. Wow. This is what that door of deception. Now, the reason is all about the reason that the door represents different dimensions is because you go from one door to another door to another door. And as you keep going through that door, there is more deception, there is more pain, there is more sorrow, and to you, to the point that you enter into a room that is far from the exit. And you say, God, how in the world did I get here? Wow. I have a, I'm a I'm, I, one day I'm going to share a message that I have, and it's called, What in Hell is Going On Here? Mm-hmm. And you get to that place where you say, how in the hell did I get here? Well, you walked into it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she she put out her arm. You took the hand, and you went in. By the way, there's a there's a law about taking in and taking from. 
mm. in the Bible. You, you know, that that is sound doctrine. <laughs> he was just saying, this is what false doctrine is. That's right. But then what he spoke and elaborated on is sound doctrine. That's because right. when we're walking towards our own door, what are we what are we walking into? Are we walking into peace, comfort, hmm. safety, security? That's what we should be walking into. Hmm. But if we're walking into the home of the seducer, there is nothing but darkness dwelling there. And sometimes the best defense against temptation is to get away from it. The Apostle Paul advised young Timothy to flee sin in 1 Timothy 6.11. And we and we spoke yesterday um, briefly about Joseph when the Potiphar's wife tried to seduce Joseph in Genesis 39, 7 states, after a time, Potiphar's wife cast her eyes on Joseph and said, lie with me. And she repeated this temptation day after day. Every she day. tried to wear him down <laughs> every day. <laughs> Every day, yeah, you know, like when that, our right? kids, when our kids, mommy, can I, mommy, can I, mommy, please, mommy, th they tried to wear you down. She tried to wear him down because if you, if you get worn down, you, you, you succumb to it. But Joseph refused to deal, to, um, yield to her temptation because he would not sin against God. And when she grabbed him by his garment, he fled and got out of the house. He ran out of the door. You know, he left his he left his robe behind. He left his robe behind. You know, the, um, last night I was going through my Facebook account and I and I ran into a video that my daughter did um, years ago when she was a young t when she was a teenager, and it was by Lecrae. So if anybody is familiar with Lecrae, he was a he was a he's a Christian rapper singer entrepreneur he's a bunch of stuff and so the song is called god is enough and some of the lyrics is this god is enough i don't need no worldly thing more of you and less of me god he's enough for me and my youngest used to sing this song matter of fact she made a video singing this song you are enough for me but if we're not careful the enemy comes and he dangles that very tempting, juicy fruit before you. And then God is not enough anymore. We need to be careful. We need to avoid the source, all sources of temptation. And that's sound doctrine. Those um, that, you know, if you're an alcoholic, you don't go hang out at bars. Right. I mean, that 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 would make sense. Right. I'm an alcoholic. You go in, you go so out. so I'm out. not going to go hang out at a bar. I'm talking about if you're overcoming oh, alcoholism. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're overcoming alcoholism, don't do you it. don't go hang out at bars. Do if you are overcoming being uh, gambling, you don't go to a horse race yeah. and say, oh, I'm just going to go there to watch the horses. No, because you are going to be tempted to gamble. OK, so we need to avoid all sources of temptation. We need to recognize that we are people that can easily be entangled and snatched up by the enemy. And he knows your weakness. So therefore, we need to stay away from all. So all, all of it, all of it, all, all of it, it all, all of, of it. it. And, you know, because remember that we are in this world, but not of the world. But while we're in the world, that snake is looking to bite you. Mm. Yeah. You ever had days where you had to fight? Temp I mean, something enters into your mind. You got to fight it or you could sit there and glean on it. And before you know it, your thoughts are taken. You're taken away by your thoughts. And you say, how did I get here? I was just I was just I was just cooking, uh, you know, making something to eat. And all of a sudden I'm in China somewhere. Mm. And I'm like, well, you know why? Because we didn't guard our thoughts. Mm. Yesterday I was going through. I was just at a stoplight and I was coming and all, all these thoughts began to flare at me. And I said, whoa. And it took a little bit of effort. But it took repentance. I said, God, please forgive me. Forgive my thoughts. Forgive. Because see, it could be anything. It could be anything that strikes your mind. Remember, we have perversities inside of us. And the snake, 
the world, your flesh, mm -hmm. your feelings. You know, like Craig said, oh, feelings, oh, 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 feelings. That stuff hits you, and before you know it, you know, it's like lighting a flare. Mm -hmm. When you have a flat tire and you don't want cars to hit you in the night, you, you got, you, they got these flares that you just, you just open, you strike them, and you put them on the ground so that if cars come, they know to go around you. Mm -hmm. Man, that flares, all of a sudden your mind starts lighting up and you got the, all these sparks going off. You got to be like when you like when your children say, "Mommy, mommy," you say, "Shut up, be quiet." In a nice way, <laughs> be quiet. I don't want to hear any more about it. You got to tell your mind. You got to tell your That's soul. That's right. That's right. Shut up. You be quiet. You have to guard your mind. And the Bible says that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but what? They are powerful. Mm -hmm. They are powerful. The warfare, the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exhorts itself against the knowledge of God. Hmm. And we take captive every thought to the obedience of Christ. We know that scripture. I was talking to someone who teaches, and I said, what does the next verse say? Um, I said, let me tell you what it says. And we are ready we are ready to discipline every act of disobedience once our obedience has been established. Once you establish yourself in an obedience coming out of something that is disobedience, you must put scripture there to guard the gate Amen. so that anything that comes against it, you're ready to hit it with scripture. Amen. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm going to let my wife close on this one. But just before John Gill writes something. He says, men should not, all women, men should not go in the way of temptation. Mm. One, mm. trusting in their own strength. Two, they may be entangled and overcome before mm -hmm. they are aware. It is good to keep out of the way of it. Wow. Wow. And how do we do that? How do we accomplish that? We need to guard our hearts, as Brenda says, and that's what I am Amen. Go I'm going to finish up with. In Proverbs 4, 23 to 27, it says, Watch over your heart with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. Put away from you a deceitful mouth and put devious lips far from you. Let your eyes look directly ahead and let your gaze be fixed straight in front of you. Consider well and watch carefully the path of your feet and all your ways will be steadfast and sure. Do not turn away to the right nor to the left. Turn your foot from evil. And Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God, which transcends, which surpasses all understanding, stands guard over ah. your hearts and your minds in who? In Christ Jesus. Three things, three things, because you know what? I'm just looking at the post here. We're live. Craig says, of his fullness have we all received grace for grace. Amen. We also have Christopher Wesley, Wesley who said, yes, let's avoid all sources yes. of temptation. And Sister Brenda Monticello says, we need guard our hearts. Yes, we need to be on guard always that the Lord will keep us, protect us. Jesus is our only answer. Amen. God, your gates. Come on, folks. We're live and we are alive because of <laughs> We're Christ. We're live and God we bless are you. alive. And until we meet again, shalom. shalom.